Spiritual enlightenment in Eastern cultures is related to intellectual awakening within an individual. According to Satguru, when a person is enlightened, he is not bound by time or physical reality. Satguru recommends yoga and meditation as two of the best paths to enlightenment. During a talk, he is asked about his experience during his moments of enlightenment. Let's find out what happened during these moments. <laughs> so, so um, I did a little reading about you. And, 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 <laughs> and uh, he, he's not as uneducated as he would have you believe. So he, he's actually <laughs> quite, quite educated, that's pretty clear. And uh, I was curious because I think it was back in 1982 when you had like your first enlightenment, enlightenment experience, I think. And uh, the, 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 there's, a, there's a story here. So, so you, you mentioned how it seemed like only 10 or 15 minutes had gone by. But what had happened is that you'd been out in this, in this state for like maybe four hours or so when you actually looked, when you came to and looked at your watch. The analogy is, is this is what people under anesthesia report all the time. In other words, they have this sense that no time has passed. You were not around that day. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm reaching. <laughs> but but, but they, they report a very similar phenomenon, you know, that it seems like they'll wake up sometimes from anesthesia and they'll go, um, you know, have you started yet? You're done? They're actually quite surprised. So whatever our timekeeping mechanism is, right? It's actually, it's different from sleep. It's, it's, it's noticeably different from sleep because often when you sleep, except in some rare instances, you, you have a sense that, you know, time has passed. You know, you went to sleep, you woke up, you know, you may not be able to judge it exactly. But characteristically, under anesthesia, when people come to, they feel like no time has passed. Any thoughts? Mm -hmm. See, our sense of time, the only way human beings know time is by the cyclical movement of things that are happening. If the earth spins once, we call it a day. If the moon goes around the earth, we call it a month. If the planet goes around the sun, we call it a year. Or if the clock goes around, we call it an hour. Mm -hmm. So only by cyclical movements we know time. What cyclical movement means is all physical dimensions of the existence, from atomic to cosmic, exist only because of cyclical movements. Anything physical in the universe is naturally cyclical. Mm -hmm. So the entire yogic process is just about this, how to transcend the cyclical moment of our existence. Because cyclical moment means we are going in circles. If I tell somebody you are going in circles, what does it mean? It means you are not getting anywhere. <laughs> so this is the fundamental ethos that once you are attached to cyclical moments of life, you are not really getting anywhere, but it feels like you are going somewhere. Today everybody knows this experience because most of them walk only on the treadmills. So, cyclical movement signifies physical existence. Mm -hmm. Physical existence, as today fundamental physics is talking about it, forever the yogic sciences have been saying this, it is a minuscule of the larger space. It is just some point zero 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 some percentage negligible percentage, all of us together, and the planet and the universe and everything, the physical universe is just way below one percent of the cosmic space. That is true even with the individual atom. Even in the individual atom, the substance is way below one percent. So this minuscule is our engagement. How I see in my experience is, it's only the footprint. We are so engaged with the footprint. You, uh, this is, uh, you know, I have been in the jungles of South India for long periods of time. At one time I was involved in tiger senses. So for days on end we followed the tiger's footprints. We saw only the footprint, we have not seen a damn tiger. 
So till you see the tiger, by footprints, whatever imagination you have, tiger breaks it for you. When he growls at you, yeah. it's all gone. All the… you know, you studied the footprint, you thought you understood and how he does things, his behavior, everything you understood by his footprints, how he moves, what he does. But when you see him, all this knowledge you gather yes. vanishes <laughs> in one moment. <laughs> Fortunately, he didn't make breakfast out of you, but even just seeing him, everything vanished. So right now, we are just studying the footprint. Consciousness, the remaining ninety-nine point whatever percentage that is there in the atom, that's there in the cosmos, this is consciousness. An atom has con uh, captured a minuscule of consciousness. Mm -hmm. You and me have captured the largest amount compared to any other creature on this planet. That's why mm -hmm. we are at the peak of evolution, mm -hmm. that we have ca captured the largest. But time we know only because of our involvement with cyclical moments. Once there is no cyclical moment or in some way if you get disengaged, with the physicality of your existence. When I say physicality, everything that is physical about you is accumulated over a period of time, isn't it? Sure. It's an accumulation. Now everything that's mental about you is also accumulated, the content I'm saying. The framework may be there, but the content is all accumulated. What you accumulate cannot be you, isn't it? It can be yours, but it can never be you. So once there is a little disengagement with the physicality of what you have gathered, suddenly there's no sense of time nor space. Mm -hmm. What is now is then, what is then is now, what is here is there, what is there is here, everything gets like this. If I understand the experience that you had that Emery's asking about and perhaps the experience that might not be passed through in memory and language of the patient in anesthesia from this point of view, would be one in which it's outside of time, maybe interior, as it said in the video, but space space has sort of a time-like aspect where present and future are in the same uh, distance. Is that kind of a restatement in any way? This is a… This, this could seem contradictory to what is generally believed in fundamental physics. Modern physics is looking at space and time. The yogic sciences look at only time. There's only time, there is no space. Because there is time, there's a consequence of space. If there was no time, there would be no space. So time is the basic, okay. not space. Space is an illusion that's been created because we are engaged with our physical natures. So if you disengage with your physical nature, suddenly there is no time, so there is no space. So suddenly what is here is there, what is there is here, people think something miraculous has happened, nothing miraculous happened. It is just that you kept your accumulations aside for a moment, that's all. What you accumulated and who you are sat separately. The very basic program, what we're teaching as inner engineering is just this, what we're training people for is, if they sit down here, body's here, what you call as your mind is somewhere else, what is you seems to be little away. Once there is a little space between you and your body, between you and your mind, suddenly there is no time. Once there is no time, there is no space, there's no possibility of space. This needs to be understood. We have a common word both for time and space, we call it kala. Kala means time. Kala also means emptiness. Mm -hmm. So emptiness means space. So this hall is empty, that means there is space here. We say when the hall is full, we say there is no space here, that's what we mean in a, in a simplistic way. Right now we are understanding time as cyclical moments. So we are looking at time in two different dimensions, kala and mahakala, the greater time. The greater time has no cyclical moments. Cyclical moment is because of physical nature. Because of physical nature, there is time in terms of birth and death, in terms of uh, initiation and expiry of everything that happens. Every atom, every electron, every proton, somewhere has a age. Even the very planets and the solar system and the sun has a age. Sometime it is begun and sometime it's going to end. Whether it's going to be a bang or it peters out, 
is <laughs> is something we can debate. Sure. But physicality is not perpetual, mm -hmm. it begins and ends. Mm -hmm. Because of that, we are looking at time in that sense, but there is time beyond cyclical nature. This we call Mahakal. Is there some logical way of explaining it? No. It is just that when you disengage with physical nature, which is the main purpose of yoga, because otherwise, you are… when you engage with your physical nature, you engage with your memory. Your body is just memory, variety of memory. Eight different dimensions we are talking, whether we see eight or four or one, it doesn't matter. This has taken a particular form only because of memory. It is functioning in a particular way only because of memory. So when we disengage with physical form, we are disengaging with memory absolutely. When you disengage with memory, suddenly there is no past, present and future, so there is no time. Because there is no time, there is no space, there is no distance, there is no possibility of this and that. Not all enlightened people live like monks they can lead a normal life as well. There are ways for anyone to get enlightened, provided they are on the right path. This is just one of the many videos we have in store for you. Here's our latest video that might interest you. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to keep them coming. Remember to let us know your thoughts in the comments section. See you in the next video and thank you for watching.